up guys, welcome back. This is day three of our series in the automotive tech series. So today we're gonna finish off with engine vacuum. Guys, so this is our vacuum gauge. One of the reasons, if you guys can notice, our vacuum hose right here seems to be pregnant. This inside is a check valve. Perfect. So now we're gonna go ahead and start up the engine and we're gonna go ahead and get a vacuum reading. So with the engine running, you wanna see between 17 to 21 inches or 22, excuse me, 18 to 22 inches, depending on which textbook you're reading. What's up guys, welcome back. This is day three of our series in the automotive tech series. So today we're gonna finish off with engine vacuum. So what is engine vacuum and why is it important? An internal combustion engine always has a piston that's working its way down and working its way up. Anytime that the piston is going on its downstroke or intake stroke, it creates a difference in pressure. Difference in pressure from the inside to the outside is vacuum. So engine vacuum is created whenever we have a difference in pressure from the pressure inside the cylinder to the pressure outside. What I'm gonna show you guys today is how to do three different tests using a vacuum gauge, which is one of my favorite tools. Even though newer car or cars are getting more high tech, we can always rely on our old school techniques. So using a vacuum gauge has been around for years. I'm, I'm a carburetor guy, so I started back in the carburetor days. We used to use an engine vacuum gauge to properly calibrate or adjust carburetors. Now we can still use them to determine if we have mechanical integrity of the engine or if we have an engine fault. And we can also use it to determine if we have an exhaust restriction. Go ahead and grab your vacuum gauge, guys. Let me show you guys how to set it up and how to run these tests. All right, guys, so this is our vacuum gauge. Just like I told you guys earlier, we've been using these since the carburetor days. This is why you notice it has positive and negative pressure. Negative pressure is vacuum, positive pressure would be used for fuel delivery. Because back in the day, we had mechanical fuel pumps that were only giving us three to five PSI of fuel pressure. So we would use this instead of our normal 60 to 100 PSI fuel injector pressure gauge. So let me show you guys how to set this up. One thing you guys wanna pay attention to when you're looking at an internal combustion engine is the first thing you wanna identify is gonna be your throttle plate. Anything behind the throttle plate this way would be considered the intake manifold. As air flows through the positive side, through the air box, once it goes past the throttle plate, it becomes a negative pressure. So then anything after the throttle plate becomes vacuum. One thing you guys wanna avoid is using the hose that goes to the brake booster. One of the reasons, if you guys can notice, our vacuum hose right here seems to be pregnant. This inside is a check valve. If I remove this hose and I connect to it, I'm always going to show vacuum because this check valve is not allowing the vacuum to deplete back into the intake when the engine is off. Okay, so this is why you guys wanna be careful with that. What I like to do is usually try to find a, find a central point of vacuum or look for a EVAP purge solenoid, which is this one right here. This solenoid is always gonna be in a central location, which is this is the host for it. And the reason being is this solenoid is going to purge fuel vapors into the intake, so we need to evenly distribute it. This is why this is a good place for you to run this test. So I'll go ahead and grab my vacuum gauge and I'll set it up to this hose right here. Perfect. So now we're gonna go ahead and start up the engine and we're gonna go ahead and get a vacuum reading. So with the engine running, you wanna see between 17 to 21 inches or 22, excuse me, 18 to 22 inches depending on which textbook you're reading. Always remember that vacuum loses one inch of vacuum for every 1,000 feet of elevation gain. So we're here in Rancho Cucamonga, our elevation is about 1,400 feet. So we're expecting to see somewhere between 15 and about 18 to 19 inches of vacuum. What we're seeing right now is about 19 inches of vacuum. So that's a good indication that this engine is breathing properly, doesn't have any mechanical faults. Um, so I would consider this to be a good, strong engine. So the next test we're gonna do is a test that we would run on a car that we think might have a restricted exhaust. So one of the common things that you'll notice when a vehicle you think might have a restriction, exhaust restriction is when you get on the throttle to try to go or overpass a car, you're gonna notice your car runs really sluggish where it's gonna do the roll type deal. Now, if you do that same acceleration at a very slow pace, you'll notice that the car will elevate an RPM and respond. But if you go and just hit it, it's not gonna respond at all. 
that's when you would run this next test. Keeping our vacuum gauge connected the way it is, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a snap test, meaning we're just gonna hit the throttle, engine RPM all the way max, and then go to the throttle. What we should expect to see is we should expect to see this vacuum drop to zero and then come back to its normal vacuum. If the exhaust is restricted in any way, what we're gonna see is we're gonna see vacuum actually increase and then come back to its normal resting vacuum. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and snap the throttle and then we're gonna see that in action. So if you guys notice, the moment we snapped the throttle, vacuum dropped to zero and then it came back and stabled off. So let's go ahead and rerun that one more time. Dele, profe. So perfect, engine, the RPM drops to zero as RPM increases. Once the RPM stabilizes, we see that we go above 19 and then it comes back and stables off. So again, this is an indication that we have no exhaust restriction and this engine is able to breathe properly without any problems. The next test I'm gonna show you guys is called a cranking vacuum test. The time you run this test is usually when a car comes in for a crank no start or if you think that you might have a mechanical problem. Back in the day when timing belts were a big thing, uh, we used to have cars come in that customers would say, I'm driving down the road, car dies, won't start, but it cranks. First thing we would do is plug in a vacuum gauge and crank it. If we got zero inches of vacuum, we know there's a problem with valve train or timing belt or timing chain. What you expect to see during a cranking vacuum test is three to five inches, and that's with the engine cranking. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this engine off. We're gonna disable fuel, and then we're gonna rerun the test so you guys can see what a cranking vacuum test will look like. Our connection's gonna be exactly the same. We're gonna be connected to an, a vacuum port. What we're gonna do since the engine's not starting, we're just gonna crank it, and what we wanna see is we wanna see between three and five inches of vacuum as the vehicle cranks. So let's go ahead and crank it. So with the engine cranking, I saw about three inches of vacuum. So that to me tells me that this engine is fully operational. So if I'm diagnosing this car for a crank no start, now I know that it's not gonna be an engine mechanical fault. I either gotta check fuel, ignition, and in some cases, the anti-theft system. So this is why this test is really important. I'm all about easy and simple testing. Why, if it's hard, you're not gonna do it. So this is why a vacuum test comes in so handy and it makes you that much more accurate on your diagnosis to determine if this is a mechanical fault or not. On another note, if you guys are planning to buy a used car, this is a good test to do. This way you make sure you don't buy a lemon. What I mean by that is if somebody's selling you a car, you might wanna make sure that you're not buying a $4,000 car that's gonna need a $6,000 engine down the road. One of the ways you can do that is by using a vacuum gauge. You run the same test you just did, if you get the readings that we mentioned before, then you know for sure the integrity of that engine is 100%. So this way you know what you're buying. And that's it guys, it's that simple. All you gotta do is find a vacuum line, connect your vacuum gauge, and then just look at what your vacuum gauge is telling you. You can apply this to diagnosis, you can also apply it, like I told you guys earlier, on new car purchase. So don't be scared of using your vacuum gauge for testing because it's gonna be a great tool for you guys to determine the mechanical integrity of this particular engine. If you guys are in the market of buying any of these tools, go ahead and check out our student store that's located in the link down below. This way you guys get all our student pricing on any equipment that you guys might need. If this video was helpful for you guys, do me a favor, give us a like. Also make sure you guys subscribe so when we drop the next series, you guys are gonna be alerted and you're gonna be the first one to know about it. This way you get a leg up on your competition. If for some reason you didn't like this video, do me a great favor, put it in the comments, tell me why. We're always trying to better ourselves and if you tell me a reason, then I'm gonna know what I need to work on to become better. If you have any questions on any of the information that we covered through any of this series, do me a favor, put it in the comments and we'll get back to you because we wanna make sure you guys get the best and the only way we can do that is if you guys let us know if you got stuck on anything or something didn't make sense. As always guys, a good technician's always learning and as we always live by here at Master Automotive Training, we are working to better the automotive industry one technician at a time and this starts with you. And I applaud you for watching this entire series. Hopefully this series has helped you become a better technician and I hope to see you guys in the near future. Signing off here, Oscar Gomez from smartautotraining.com.